Hi everyone. So look at all those crazy colors. A lot of wild colors I used in this one. I used a lot of the Arteza acrylic colors, the premium colors that come in these pouches. I really enjoy the packaging for the Arteza products. Um, you get every single last drop of the paint out and so there's absolutely no waste. The colors are really bright and vibrant and most of them do stay true after they dry. Um, I only had a few that had a little bit of color shifting or darkening. And then I used an 18 by 24 Arteza canvas. I love their canvases. Their stretch canvases are awesome. So um, I also did a little bit of my custom paint mixing. You know how I do. So you'll see some metallics in there. That is... Um, Either a little bit of the Arteza metallic um, paints that I used and then like that one right there is the green gold by Goldens. I'm kind of addicted to that color. It's really bright and vibrant. That is the 24 karat deco art with a little bit of yellow in it. And look at that bright uh, vermilion sort of reddish orange. And then that beautiful coppery sand color. I know I adjusted all those colors, so I can't tell you what they are. But that is the iridescent pearl. So there's a link to Arteza products used in this video in the description box if you're interested in purchasing anything from Arteza today. Today's painting is the story of the rotating canvas. <laughs> and it's kind of apropos because it's coming out of a funnel which is a round um, you know pouring device and I also do the funnel in a spiral which you will see the way I poured it so everything about this is like in a circle and I just find it funny as I was editing um, <laughs> how many times I turned the canvas in this and it was crazy <laughs> but it's really important to do that um, and we'll talk about that more as we get more into the painting now the thing about the funnel that I like is usually when you put your colors in a cup the first ones that you put in are the last ones to come out and in a funnel there's a difference. It's almost like they all come out a little bit at the time. At a time, obviously, uh, the first one that you put in the funnel falls down into the funnel, and that is going to be the first one that comes out. So that's opposite than what you would get with a cup. But after you, the spout is filled, and then um, it becomes released when you lift it off the canvas. It's almost like all the paints get released in, in almost equal amounts. It's a really cool um, tool to use. And I know it seems kind of gimmicky, but honestly, there are certain effects that you can only get with a funnel. And I encourage you to experiment with those because you will be surprised at you know what will come out. There's also kind of a force that happens, the gravity. So normally when we're pouring, you know, the gravity is um, pulling at that one stream of paint that's coming out. But with the funnel, it's like the weight of all the paint sitting on top of the, the tiny little spout. Like sometimes you have to even, I've seen people tape the bottom. I haven't had great luck with that. I usually just put my finger over the bottom, but you can feel the pressure of the paint just wanting to forcibly exits the funnel <laughs> so there's something about that too I think that gives the funnel a, a unique effect and so you should try it if you've never tried it before I'm having a heyday here with the rings like I said just almost everything about this painting is in a circle and ironically it doesn't turn out to look like a circle at all at the end not only do I use a funnel, 
which is a circle, and I make this funnel, funnel in a spiral when I do my pour. But I add circles around it, and then I do a ring pour in the center, and then I do another cup. So it's like three pours in one. This is a really complex painting, and here's my third little pour. I was nervous that the center, when it stretched out, was just going to be too much of that vermilion orange color. So I wanted to add some cool blue tones to the center to kind of counterbalance that. You know, this is a tricky painting. I have a lot of colors that when they mix together are going to create mud. So I had to be really careful in the way that I layered them and also, um, you know, the colors that I put next to each other because there's a lot of blue and greens and there's that bright orange and um, you know orange is made from red and yellow so you know you're definitely risking <laughs> getting some mud but part of the reason I didn't was because you saw me add the pores separately so that was one of the, the factors for that it looks like an avocado <laughs> I was like oh it looks like avocado and then I guess I was trying to avoid here just getting the standard ring pour look. So I zoop, ran my finger through and zoop, ran my finger through again. And now I really have some interesting patterns going on in this painting. You just can't be afraid sometimes to try something new if you're unsure. Um, if you want to do something a little bit outside of the box. And there's absolutely nothing wrong with just doing a beautiful, simple ring pour. I'm one of those artists that I'm always kind of striving to do something a little bit out of the ordinary. So. That's why you'll see me a lot of time using, you know, little gestures and uh, little things in my art that just, I, I guess, get me outside of my comfort zone, get me outside of the box a little bit. You can already tell, look at all the beautiful lines in this painting. and. Uh, Definitely, there's parts of it already I'm not happy with. And, um, you know, when you zigzag your canvas a lot, like I went left, right, up, down, you're going to get a lot of those zigzag lines, and those are hard for composition. Um, and so I, I took some time to dump some of that off because... I, I really didn't love that. Those zigzags are not my favorite. It, it looks to me like someone who doesn't have control of their composition when I see a ton of those zig zigzags. And for me, I just, you know, I'm a Virgo, I love to have control. So at this point, the paint is pretty much as thin as I can get it. You can even see that orange corner up in the top left is popping out, so I can't get any more paint off this canvas. So I sit and stare at this for like 20 minutes. <laughs> and I am not kidding <laughs> when I say it could have been longer. Literally, the camera is not frozen right now. I'm just waiting for the painting to like tell me something. I'm looking for it to speak to me. And I do see all these beautiful patterns, but you know, when you're in doubt as to what to do, if you sit there and look at your painting, you, you need to turn it because every different direction gives you a new perspective on what the painting could be. But no, I didn't get anything from that. So I turn it again. 
I stare at it. This is all sped up, like, by the way. <laughs> so yeah, this went on for like 20 minutes. I turned it again back to its original position, which I found ironic, and I looked at it some more. It's hard because there's so much going on already that on the one hand I could just leave it like it is, but it felt incomplete to me and I hate those zigzags down at the bottom. So I turn it again. <laughs> I mean, literally, this could have been like the carousel of paintings or something, but I turn it again and I decide I'm going to do some balloon rolls to cover up a few of the parts that I'm not happy with. And one of the things I love about this painting is the blue center. It looks like a pool almost. Um, and what I'm hoping, remember that really wild orange color that I put against the canvas, and I'm really hoping that as I do my balloon rolls, it's gonna start picking up some of the paint onto the balloon, and it will expose that underneath. But again, as you can see, look what's happening. Just like I said, you know, we have a lot of orange and a lot of green, and that's going to make mud because red and green together make mud. So I'm already, I see my balloon rolls already and I'm really struggling already with them because I just, I don't want to keep making more mud. So I have to get enough paint off the canvas that some of the orange pops through. I have to add some white to my balloon so I can get some highlights going on where I'm struggling with that mud color and I don't want to ruin this beautiful painting with these balloon rolls and I don't want it to be too busy like there's a lot going on I love the striations that go from left to right across the painting isn't that gorgeous and that's where I drew my finger through to get those long lines across there now doesn't it kind of just look like a flowing river? Like you just happened upon some sort of tropical um, jungle, you know, flower jungle or whatever, and there's just like a gorgeous little pool, little river just running through it. Or it could be a waterfall if you turn it the other direction. And I decide to put like a little flower right there in the center coming down in, into or over the water. There we go. That right there is my favorite little flower in the center. So it's a weird thing about balloon rolls, you guys. And of course, another turn. But, <clears throat> you know, there's times, it's like, I, I know it's my signature move right now, and there really was a time where I didn't actually do balloon rolls, just so you know, but um, there was a time when I didn't do them, but right now I'm definitely a little bit addicted, and a lot of it has to do with just seeing what can come out of these paintings. Um, And what you're seeing here now is I'm going back in and adding some depth because the mud that I created with the oranges and the greens mixing together, um, I corrected the highlights with the white by adding the white back in there when I did my balloon rolls. Now I'm going in and I'm correcting the depth which is the low lights. So remember in my last video, I talk about all the different tones that you need to create depth in your work. And you need a high tone, a mid tone, and a low tone. And so now if for some reason something happens in your painting and you lose one of those tones, you'll have a very 
mm, monotoned painting so it's not going to have a lot of depth to it. So I go back in with my dark Payne's Gray, I believe that is, and I add some depth to that. Now it might look, you know, a little whatever spermy <laughs> right now, but it's going to sort of melt into the painting. I, I use Floetrol, so Floetrol has a self-leveling effect. So I sort of, it's, it will melt and match into the painting. You do have to be careful and kind of, you can see I'm following the natural lines of the painting for the most part. I'm not doing anything too crazy. But now look how that added, look how that added some depth to that painting. And now it really has a, a certain quality to it. And then I turn it again and turn it again and again. <laughs> But look, here's some close-ups, you guys. You just can't deny how pretty the blues and the greens look together. And look at this one. See how the ring pour, the remnants of the ring pour still show with the pop of that bright orange coming through from the canvas underneath next to the flowers. It's a really pretty effect. I love the watery look of the center of this. And this one's going to be gorgeous, covered in a high gloss varnish. It's just wild and tropical to me. And here's the dried painting. Look how pretty it dried. It's still so vibrant and beautiful. This one is still for sale at my shop, you guys. It is a really special piece if you're interested. You can either visit my shop at heathermaderart.com. Please feel free to support my channel and there's a link in the description box to my PayPal and as always, I can't wait to make more art videos just for you. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe so I can make more art videos for you.